Okay, we'll move on to this next caller. Caller, please tell me your name and where you're calling from. Michelle Gregory. Hi, Michelle. Welcome to the show. What is the question for Rabbi? Thank you. Um, well, I wanted to tell Rabbi Singer thank you. I had sent him an email, and I really appreciated his uh, quick reply. Wonderful. I, um, I sent him a note to let him know that I, I found my way back home. Oh, Baruch Hashem. Man. Welcome home. And so um, my question is, is I am starting from the beginning, um, reading Genesis, and so I had a question because it seems like there's two different explanations for the creation of humans, and personally, I kind of like the first one because we are created all together. So I was hoping that Rabbi could give me a little more insight in there. Okay, Rabbi, do you have a, a clear wrap on her question? I, I don't understand. I didn't understand. Yeah, the Michelle, question. same here. Uh, do you have a down. Do you have a specific question uh, that you that you want to make it so it's really clear for Rabbi and me and the viewers? Uh, what What's precisely about yes. the creation? Well, it it appears that there are two different explanations. That the first explanation is man and woman were created together, and the second one is that Adam, man, was created first, and then. Eve was created second. I understand that. Sure. Okay, okay. Okay, well, great. Well, we'll go ahead and pass it on to Rabbi then, and thank you for calling in. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. take care, Rabbi. All right, Rabbi, go ahead. The passages that the caller is juxtaposing is Genesis one twenty seven and Genesis chapter 2. Those are the two passages side by side. In Genesis one twenty seven, it says that God created Adam, male and and female. He may have created human beings and he created them. Zachur Nikeva Bara Oisam. That male and female, he created them. That's Genesis chapter 1. Uh, Genesis chapter 2, we have uh, Adam is created first. He, we are told in chapter 2, verse 19, that Adam gazed upon each of the animals, or each of the creatures of the world. He saw them, he saw their nature. And accordingly, he named them, not only the land animals, the birds that fly in the heavens and the sky, but he realized, he concluded, no animal in the world was compatible with him. And then the Torah says that HaKadosh Baruch the Holy One, blessed be his name, put Adam into a deep sleep, and then from Adam, he removed the rib and closed the place from which the rib was removed and created Isha, created for Adam a, a true helpmate. So it seems that there's a very big contradiction because in Genesis chapter 1 it says that God created man and woman. And in Genesis chapter 2 it says that man was created first and then woman was created second. I hope that in the way that I presented it, and again all I did was just go into the text, uh, that's very plain, it, the answer becomes obvious. Genesis chapter 1 is a, in the entire chapter is binary. And it's telling us in a moment about that God is the creator and master of the universe. And through him, all things were created by his word. That's all. And that's what Genesis chapter 1 is telling us, that God is the creator of the whole universe. That's all. And you'll see the binary quality, the binary feature there. There was evening, it was morning, and so on and so forth. God divided the heaven, the earth, the waters, and so on. And, and again, Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 tells us that God, in fact, created uh, male and female for human beings. What is Genesis chapter 2? If you read it, after the sixth day that God completed the world, God set apart the seventh day and made it holy, because God ceased to work on the seventh day. What happens next? Ela told us, Hashemayim Varetz, we're rewinding. Chapter 1 is the headline. This is the story of creation. But as you know, the, the world wasn't created for fish. The world wasn't created for clouds. It wasn't created for frogs and, and leopards. And the world was created for mankind. That was the purpose of all creation, that man is created of both clay and the spirit of Hashem, and he has that tension, and man, therefore, has free will. 
But in Genesis chapter 1, it's not dealing with that. Genesis chapter 1 is just sort of the headline and then the subheadline, as you have to see in the newspaper. Now, Genesis chapter 2 says, okay, let's go back for a moment and see exactly how God created man and woman. Let me, let's hear the details. And there's a very important detail. That means Genesis chapter 2 has a different agenda. Now, according to the Almighty, blessed be his name, sought to, sought to demonstrate that Odom had the insight, a unique insight, into all the creatures of the world. When it says he named them, which is very important, it doesn't mean that Adam was somehow just this, um, he memorized every name, and this is somehow, he literally was able to look into the nature of every creature and assign it a name according to its character. This is very important. He, was, he had that insight into the names. It wasn't that, hey, oh, let's call that, you know, oaf, bird, we'll call that. Uh, no, each name of every animal is, is according to its nature. But one of the things that occurred to Adam is that once he realized that no creature, he, once he realized the nature of every animal, he realized the obvious. All the animals that he encountered were completely incompatible with him. They couldn't. They were not an Aza Kenegdo. They were, could not be. We'll just call it a a helpmate. They couldn't. They could, were not compatible with him. And this caused Adam to long, to long for something. Now, why did Hakadosh Baruch Hu do it this way? Because Adam would then appreciate his wife. Rather than just being something that he was just there, a woman was just there, now he would appreciate it. Moreover, a woman is on a unique level spiritually. We see that after this event, we see that women in the Torah usually got it right and are spiritually on a higher level. And because women, a woman wasn't created from the dust. She was created directly from Adam. And that's why you see that when, when Abraham and Sarah, God said, listen to Sarah. Uh, Rebecca was the one who picked up that Esau was wicked and not suitable for the covenant. Jacob was. So we see this quality coming out. Now, there are exceptions. But uh, in general, the women have this kind of spiritual, this spiritual sensitivity. So what Genesis 2 is telling us, let me explain to you how this happened. I'm paraphrasing. But all Genesis chapter 1 says is that God created male and female. It doesn't say at the same time. So what the text says simply, God created as male and female. That's all. Now, there's also, I, I should explain, why did God begin also with one man? Why didn't he create them both at the very same time? There's another reason that is, that is important to be conveyed, and that is that, uh, I mean, bear in mind that when God created the fish of the sea, the Tyre says that he filled the, 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 the ocean swarmed with fish. Presumably, there were millions of fish. When God created the animals, the world was filled with, with, with creatures. The birds in the sky, the skies were filled with them. So why did, when God created man, why did he start with one? It says, Lomo in Hebrew, Lomo Nivra Odom Yechidi. Why did God begin with one person? This is also important for every person to remember that, that, that a person should understand that it will be worth creating the whole world for a single individual. And in fact, if you save a single individual, you've in fact saved an entire world. And if you destroy a single individual, you've destroyed an entire world. So, th so therefore, it, it was worth for God to create the entire universe and all of it, the, all the galaxies just for one person. So therefore, the Genesis chapter 1 is just telling you the final result. Chapter 2 is, is like, you know, when you have Google Earth, and then you, have, do, you keep magnifying and magnifying, going, okay, let's now go back and explain how this came about. Let me give you the details. There's, there's nothing in chapter 1 
that contradicts chapter two. And always, I, what do I always say to you? I always say, read it for yourself. It's there. It just says that God created man and woman, which he did. Uh, it doesn't say they're created at the same time. God was the one who put Adam to sleep. Read it. God is the one that took the rib out of Adam. Read it. God is the one that formed uh, the Isha, the, the woman, from Adam. <laughs> no one else did it. Uh, there's a joke. Uh, just a joke. Uh, there's a, a joke of a, a scientist who turned to God and said, Ah, big deal. You created man. I could do the same thing. And God said, Really? Let me, let me see. So the scientist goes to the backyard with a shovel, and it begins to dig up dirt and start to play with it, adjust it. And God says, Hey, buddy, get your own dirt. So, <laughs> so that's the key. So the key of chapter one is get your own dirt, that God created the world ex nihilo from nothing. Chapter two is now explaining about man, period. And incidentally, from the, this moment, from the moment we come to these passages about Adam, that's how the text begins. These are the generations. It's not interested in fish anymore. If the word fish ever comes up in the Bible after this, it's only ancillary to the story. It is, it's not, there's no story about fish, because uh, fish isn't the purpose of the creation. That's all. Just always read it for yourself side by side, and you'll be fine. <laughs> בחפץ או קול אזי מלך, אזי מלך שמו נקרא ואחרי כפלות הכל לבדו ימלוך נועד